Polyploidy is a type of genetic mutation that is very rare in humans. Fetuses who are affected by this genetic mutation are often lost by miscarriages or even if they do survive until they are born, they do not survive for very long after their birth. And for this very reason, when it is found out that a pregnant woman is carrying a fetus or an embryo with polyploidy, the doctor often advises them to just carry out an abortion. So firstly, let's look at what polyploidy actually is. Polyploidy is a condition that occurs when there are more than two sets of chromosomes present in the autosomal cells of the body. The most common types of polyploidy are triploidy and tetraploidy. As their name suggests, these mean that there are three sets of chromosomes and four sets of chromosomes in the autosomal cells of the body, respectively. Even though they are common types of polyploidy. It is worth noting that these conditions are very rare. Triploidy is already very rare, occurring in only 1-2% to of pregnancies, and tetraploidy is even rarer than that. Now I want to consider the causes of triploidy. The first cause is dispermy. It is when an ovum, which contains one set of chromosomes, is fertilized by two sperm cells, which each contain one set of chromosomes. When these three cells fuse together to form the zygote, the zygote will have three sets of chromosomes. The next cause of triploidy is when the oocyte fuses with a polar body before males is two occurs. So in this diagram, the secondary oocyte fuses with a polar body. Each of them has two sets of chromatids. Note that each of them has two sets of chromatids, but they are still haploid cells. Now when these two cells fuse together, they produce a secondary oocyte that has four sets of chromatids. And as you can see here, this cell is already undergoing meiosis 2, but it is arrested in metaphase 2. And then when a sperm fertilizes the secondary oocyte, meiosis continues, which then causes secondary oocyte to split up, producing another polar body. And this is just a normal meiosis process. However, as you can see, this cell now still has two sets of chromatids. The polar body has two sets of chromatids. Normally, they would each have only one set of chromatids. And the problem is seen here clearly when two sets of chromatids fuses with another set of chromatid from the sperm cell, which gives you three sets of chromatids, i.e. the zygote would be a triploid. Another cause would be the fusion of the ovum with a polar body. As you can see here, meiosis 2 is being carried out normally, so from the beginning there is a secondary oocyte with two sets of chromatids, and at the end, the ovum only has one set of chromatid, and the polar body also has one set of chromatids. However, after that, these two normal cells then fuse together, which then forms a triploid zygote again. Triploidy can also occur because of meiotic failure during gametogenesis. Although this diagram only depicts the error in oogenesis, it is clear that it can also happen during spermatogenesis. So you start out with a primary oocyte, which contains four sets of chromatids, and it is a diploid cell. This cell then undergoes meiosis 1 in order to produce a secondary oocyte and a polar body. And now, normally, these two cells would each have two sets of chromatids. However, as you can see, all of the chromatids or the chromosomes have moved to one cell, which is the secondary oocyte rather than the polar body. Now, the secondary oocyte has become a diploid cell with four sets of chromatids. And so after meiosis 2 occurs, the polar body would only have two sets of chromatids rather than one, and the ovum would have two sets of chromatids as well. When the nuclei of the ovum and the sperm cell fuse together, this produces a triploid zygote with three sets of chromatids. Next, I want to explore the causes of tetraploidy. Now, tetraploidy can be caused by a failure in mitosis in the early embryo. So, as you can see here, during mitosis, all of the chromosomes have moved to one daughter cell rather than the other one. So, one of them will just degenerate, while this one now becomes a tetraploid cell. As mitosis continues to happen, the daughter cells of this mitosis will also be tetraploid because of how mitosis conserves the chromosome number rather than halves it. So then you end up with an embryo whose cells are tetraploid. Another cause would be the two diploid zygotes fusing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to some of you. And please like and subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments.